Hello! In this video I will show you how to even out exposure of an image using GIMP 2.8. I take all my photos in RAW format and this image was taken on a sunny day so as you see I've got a lot of very dark shadows and the sky seems to be almost blown out and also the colors are very flat. Now I'm going to show you how I managed to improve this image in GIMP. Here it is, so I think it's a huge improvement. And now I'm going to show you how to do it in GIMP 2.8. First I'm going to straighten the image. Using the rotate tool I'm clicking on the image to activate it. I want to turn my image a bit to the left. Minus 1 seems to be enough and I'm pressing rotate. Now I'm going to crop the image. With crop tool I'm selecting the area of the image I want to keep and first I'm doing it roughly, now I'm going to zoom in to fine tune my selection. I don't want to crop off too much, just the necessary bits. Now I'm going to click somewhere on the image and it's going to be cut out. As a next step I'm duplicating my image and now I'm going to start with the sky. I'm taking the fuzzy select tool and clicking somewhere on the sky to start my selection. In tool options I change my mode to the add to the current selection and keep on selecting the sky until the whole area of the sky is selected. I'm zooming in to make sure that everything is selected. For this video I'm doing all the selections quite roughly just to show you how it's done in GIMP and uh, because usually I'm doing it more carefully. Proper selections take a really long time to do and I don't want to extend this video. Ok, I'm done with the selection of the sky. Now I'm going to select grow, grow by one pixel to make sure that everything is included. And next I'm going to select feather and using the 5 pixels which should be enough. Next I'm going to edit copy, edit paste and I'm going to call this layer sky. Using Levels tool I'm going to darken the sky now. First I'm darkening the midtones, then I'm darkening the shadows. I'm not going to do anything with the highlights in this sky because they seem to be bright enough. Now I'm going to add a new transparent layer take blend tool, my foreground color is set to black, gradient foreground to transparent and shape to linear. Now I'm setting the transparent layer to overlay and reduce the opacity to about 30%. Now I'm pulling the gradient from the top of the sky to the middle of the sky to darken that bit. And then one more time at an angle. I don't like this particularly dark part of the sky so I'm going to brighten it up now. Right click on the layer, add layer mask and I'm choosing white full opacity. Here I'm using big soft brush and I want to make sure that my layer mask is selected and not the layer itself and the foreground color is set to black and I'm going to paint it over with 
dark part of the sky. Adding the layer mask helped, but not as much as I expected, so I'm going to add a new transparent layer. Set my foreground color to white. Transparent layer to overlay and reduce the opacity to about 31%. And now I'm painting over the dark parts of the sky with different opacity of the brush. Now I'm zooming in to check my sky. Sky seems to be fine, so now I can carry on. Now I'm selecting the copy of the background image. And with the help of the free select tool, I'm going to select my red walls. Because those needs to be certainly brightened up. As I mentioned before, in this video I'm doing selections in a quite rough way. But uh, this should be enough for you to see how it should be done. To select second part of the wall, I'm changing the mode in tool options to add to the current selection. You have probably noticed that I'm selecting only the dark parts of the walls. It's because I want to avoid blowing out the already bright parts when I will be lifting the shadows. To be honest, you can spend hours editing a photo, but it all depends on at what size you will display your image later on. If you are going to show to the world only a small size image, there is really no need of extreme precision in, in post-processing. Ok, I have finished selecting the wall. Now I'm going to soften the selection, so I'm going to select Feather Selection and select here 30 pixels. Next I'm going to Edit Copy, Edit Paste. I'm calling this layer red. Now I'm going to use Levels to brighten up the walls and also to give them some contrast and also some saturation. First I'm going to increase it, but later I want to reduce it because it seems to be a bit too strong. So to desaturate my wall, I'm going to use Hue Saturation tool and reduce the saturation by minus 10. Looking at the walls again, I think they are a bit too bright. So using the cars, I'm going to darken them up a bit. Well, this is the process of editing a photo. First you do one thing, then you change your mind and you do another thing. Now I'm selecting the copy of the background layer again. Taking the free select tool and selecting the grass. Now grass is selected and I'm going to soften the selection like in previous case. So I'm going to select Feather Selection and choosing 30 pixels. Next I'm going to Edit Copy, Edit Paste. 
I call this layer green. Here I'm going to increase the highlights quite a lot, also the mid-tones. And also play a tiny bit with the shadows. The grass seemed to be oversaturated to me as well, so I'm going to reduce the saturation using the hue and saturation tool and select minus 5. Now I'm selecting the copy of the background layer again. And with the help of the free select tool, I'm selecting with a bit of the white wall to brighten it up. I'm feathering with selection by 30 pixels. Next I'm going to edit copy, edit paste. I'm naming this layer white and I'm going to use levels as before to brighten it up. Now I'm selecting the copy of the background layer again. And using the free select tool, I'm going to select now the houses. I'm going to avoid the bright parts of the houses just the same way like I did with the walls. But instead I'm going to include the trees. Like with previous selections, I'm feathering this selection by 30 pixels. Next I'm going to edit copy, edit paste. And I'm calling this layer house. And once again I am using levels to brighten up the highlights, also the mid-tones, and add the contrast. Now I'm going to fine-tune my selections to get rid of the hellos around the buildings and trees and the walls. So I'm going to add white full opacity layer mask to the layer red, which are my walls. And then I'm going to use soft brush 
to get rid of the halos, which are the worst thing you can get in an image after post-processing. Also, I noticed that my trees are a bit too dark in comparison to the rest of the image, so I'm going to use another transparent layer, set my foreground color to white and the layer mode to overlay, reduce the opacity to about 30% and using the large soft brush I'm going to paint in some white color. Looks like reducing the opacity to 30% was a bit too much, so I'm going to increase the opacity now. Now on a closer look, I can see that my houses actually have some halos as well and now I want to get rid of it. Like before, I'm adding the full opacity white layer mask to the layer house and then set my foreground color to black. And using the soft big brush, I'm painting in some black color and as you see the Hello is disappearing. Okay, I have finished with this and now I'm going to sharpen up the image. I always keep the original layer, so I'm going to switch it off and make it invisible for a while. Now I'm merging all the visible layers. Next I'm going to Filters, Enhance and Sharp Mask. Here I use radius of 1.3, amount of 0.30 and threshold 4. And now let's see again what we had before and what we've got now. I hope that you like the transformation I made to this image. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.